everyone, I'm Lindsay and welcome to Inside the Hem where we dive into all things sewing with style and budget in mind. This month I'm bringing you 30 days of festive fashion sewing where each day I'm sharing a new garment sewing product idea to inspire your holiday wardrobe. No matter your personal style, join me as we add a touch of handmade magic to this season's celebrations. Let's dive into today's festive project, a pair of super cool metallic pants. Okay, before you immediately click away from this video, <laughs> thinking you could never pull them off, hear me out, okay? They really aren't as far out as you think, especially when you style them to fit your personal style. And metallics are basically a neutral, so the options are endless, trust me. You could take them and dress them down, like this monochromatic outfit. It's just a sweater, a blazer, and sneakers, but still super put together, casual, and minimal. You could dress them up, like this sheer button-down look, paired with some silver sandals, and you're chic and sexy and ready to go for the night. Or you could tone them down with a black sweater and sandals. I call this book ending, when the top and shoes are the same color and then there's something else in the middle. Some people also call it sandwiching, but whatever you call it, it can really minimize the visual impact of a very loud, wild, or crazy piece of clothing. Finally, you could just, of course, lean into the glam of it all and make a full-on <laughs> silver metallic suit. How great and expensive does this look? Pretty cool, right? All right, now that I've shown you how to wear them, here's what you need to make them. All right, so here is our inspiration. It is the sterling metallic coated cotton straight leg pants. Originally retailed for $1,980. Half off now though for $9.90. <laughs> what a deal. Um, here they are on a body. And I'm gonna start pointing out some things that I really liked about these. You'll be able to notice right away some of the seeming detail. I thought that that minimized the sort of impact of them. When they had some seam lines, breaking it up, creating additional shadows, they looked a little less mirror-y and a little kind of, I don't know, I guess more intentional. Um, she's going to move around in them a little bit. They are still shiny, okay? But can you see how the stitching draws your eye more to the stitching than it does just like, oh my God, that is a really wild fabric, um, these also happen to have the, um, like little carpenter details. So there's a, um, a hammer holder. I don't know. What do we call those? <laughs> that little hooky thing that I think carpenters actually put hammers in. Um, and it also has like big patch pockets in the back here. There's also, I believe, some kind of pocketing happening here. That's just a really, really close up of the pocket. And I mean, for a thousand dollars, that's, that's all we get. Um, in terms of photos. So not the most helpful thing in the world, but you get an idea of where we're going. Big patch pockets. Um, the front has your typical denim pockets, typical, like just regular waistband, zip fly, all of that stuff. Um, we have a seam, seaming detail there. We have the little hammery, hammer hook thing. Um, and I thought that that was an additional pocket, but it might not be. Okay, so silver coated finish that gives them the look of slick leather made from cotton. They're cut in a workwear inspired straight leg shape and have a flattering high rise waist. So that's kind of like the overall design detail that I also pay attention to as well because you want them to look proportional. You want, I know it seems a little bit weird to like make them high rise and really long and a wide leg, like it's taking up so much space. But I think in a weird way, whenever you do that, it makes them less obvious. Um, Wear yours with a tucked in top and mules. Okay, fine. Details and care. Silver coated cotton button and concealed zip fastening at front. 100% cotton machine wash aluminum color. Um, okay, so that's our inspiration, right? 
here is our powder. It is Simplicity 9957. And initially looking at this, you're like, girl, no, <laughs> that's not the same. But if we scroll on down to the line drawings, look what we have. Okay, so this is a view that does have those additional seam lines, which I love. I actually prefer this version, obviously without the, you know, um, mix and matching fabrics and without whatever like fringe detail this is. But just imagine this all plain like this one is. We've got the regular denim details, zip fly button, regular button band, I'm sorry, regular waistband with the belt carriers, your little pocket here, big patch pockets in the back. Um, ours is just missing the hammer holder thing, which I don't really need a hammer holder. If you want to add one, it's just a strip of fabric. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but these are really, really close. I do also believe sizing wise, they're going to come in two rises, I think. Um, sizes 10 to 18 and then 20 women's to 28 women's. Um, views A and C have frayed raw edges. If it doesn't come up to high rise, I have to adjust for my rise anyways. Even if I'm making a pair of high rise pants, I still have to raise the rise a little bit. So you're going to want to do that. This, you do not want this, especially if you're a curvy girl, this is not flattering. Okay. These do not fit her. They're too small. Um, and the rise in my opinion is, I mean, even if you're going for a good solid mid rise, they need to come up and over this. And then a good high rise would be up here somewhere. Hers, you can see where hers would sit right here somewhere. So wear them so they're comfortable, make them so they're comfortable, but still try and honor the high rise so that you don't end up with this kind of sausage casing looking um, type of pants. You want them to be a little bit more relaxed, like they're fitting her, um, and then high rise and then the longer length. So you might even have to lengthen the longest ones, um, just add length to this little situation down here um, to get your inseam length. Okay, and then, yeah, so that's the version, either this one or the green one would work. We're going to want to do the um, uh, flat felled seams, not the frayed edges. I'm not even sure if the fabric I found will fray. Um, but yeah, super cool pair of pants. Um, for what it's worth, I do think even on this pair that's too small for her in the front, I do think the rise is not horrible, um, considering there's so many terrible fit issues in the front. It is too short. Um, I don't think the crotch curve is horrible, um, considering all the fit issues we have in the front. It is a little short in the rise still. Do you see how there's like a natural line in her body right here? That's where they should come up to all the way around. Um, so, and you can see it's dipping down too. So these do not fit her well at all. Um, ironically, hers is dipping down too. So just as always with all pants, you need to be checking your curve, your crotch depth, your rise, all of that stuff. Okay, back of the envelope is they're recommending cotton blends, denim, linen blends, twill. And then for the non-frayed versions, you can also use chambray, chino, and stretch wovens because those won't fray beautifully. They fray, but not in a pretty way. And then you need linings for like your pocket bags and maybe the waist the inner part of the waistband too, maybe. Um, a jean zipper and a jeans button. And then here's our sizing. Um, we should be looking for like around one inch of ease at the waist. But again, the waist should be at the natural waist, not wherever these are sitting. So if we come down to... We don't get finished garment measurements anyways, so... But at your natural waist, we should have one inch of positive ease. And then as you go down, you'll need to measure yourself wherever you want these to end up hitting. If you like, if you love mid-rise, for example, measure yourself at mid-rise and give yourself one inch of ease in the waistband there and then adjust the rise and the curve and all that accordingly. All right, fabric. I was shocked, you guys, but Joanne has some. <laughs> Joanne has silver metallic faux leather fabric. Um, I have not seen it in person. 
Um, it does not tell what it's made from. Like the other one said it was cotton made to look like leather. This one just says faux leather fabric. So I'm assuming it's like that plasticky feeling stuff. But I mean, it looks just like the inspiration, even the little crinkles in it. And I imagine as you wear it and work with it, it gets even more crinkly. Um, currently on sale for $20 a yard. That's pricey. I understand, especially for Joanne. Um, like I said, I haven't seen it. I do want to go get my eyeballs on it, but, um, but yeah, there it is right there at Joanne, our silver metallic fabric. We don't get like a ton of uh, photos of this, but it looks just like the inspiration. Here's the Joanne. And then here is our inspiration. It has that like kind of papery looks to it. I mean, this is brand new, never been used. So like I said, maybe some of the crinkles in here came whenever they were working with it. But yeah, I'd want to feel it to make sure that it felt like something I would want to wear pants from. I mean, faux leather pants are not nothing, they're, they're nothing new. Um, and it even has bottoms listed as an option. So, but, but yeah, there it is at Joanne. I know they aren't for everyone, but if you want to elevate a simple, easy to wear holiday outfit, I urge you to give these a try. Thanks for joining me for today's festive project. I hope that recreating these metallic pants sparks some inspiration for your holiday wardrobe. Do not forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on tomorrow's project where we'll be creating a button down blouse. But in true Lindsay fashion, not your everyday button down. It's basics with a twist around here, remember? I can't wait to see you back here for more 30 days of festive fashion sewing. I will see you all very soon. Bye!